Optioning. Is someone there? He said, I am. In Tonga, when you speak to a dad, the first thing is that you say, Optioning. Then you'll say, I am. I am. <laughs> so, um, my name is Busi Songobeni. I'm from an entity called Supported Employment Enterprises. Um, I prepared a slide and then I was like, does it necessary for me to speak through slides or should I speak to the people? Speak to the people. I like that. Supported Employment Enterprises, it's a government entity out of the Department of Labor. It was established in 1943 as sheltered employment factories. We're the biggest employer of people with disabilities in the country. Having established 1943 after the Second World War, the back then government realized that we have sent soldiers to the war, they came back with a disability, one way or the other. So they recycled them within government to work with their skills. Thank God we don't have wars again. Now we've got a big challenge. We've got special schools. Special schools that's where learners who are not gifted like me, they have a disability one way or the other, go to, they don't go to the mainstream. The question is, since we're that disadvantage in that regard, where do they go to for work? <coughs> it becomes a big challenge. So in the new dispensation, or in, after democracy, support employment enterpri enterprises was inherited as it is from the back then government, and it was put under the Department of Labor, under Public Service Employment. <laughs> so we're under the Act of Public Service Act. That's how we establish has, having said that, that we are the biggest employers of people with disabilities, especially from the special schools. I've been around the special schools of uh, Islander until Utata, I think. And uh, yeah, the entire Eastern Cape. In the country, we got over 4,2 million of people with disabilities. The average number that I got when I visited the school was 350 <coughs> per enrollment. That is the lowest. So meaning 350 upwards, someone in the waiting list, those special schools, those learners who are disabled. Where are they going to work as a company now? So us as an entity, we recruit those learners in the factories. What would we do? We focus on three disciples. One, we do school furniture. So they work on skill. So they work in a factory. They do school furniture. The desk and the chair that me and you sit at are manufactured by supported employment enterprises through people with disability. The second thing, we do hospital clothes. Doctors, patients, you know when you go to hospital, those things you wear, they are manufactured there. So we've got a textile division in our entity. The, we have now moved to school um, office furniture. These chairs that we're sitting at, the boardroom, couches. So we focus on those three disciples. So within them, there's a lot of things that could happen. For example, in school furniture, You'll have your primary, you'll get your preschool, you've got your high school, you've got the desk, you've got the tables. I came with them, they are there in the stalls. So you can be able to visit the stalls to see exactly the products that are being manufactured at our entity. <coughs> we've got 12 factories across the country. In Eastern Cape, we've got two Port Elizabeth and East London. Our East London factories, yeah, just by Electron Street, number one, Electron Street. 
as you go to town, you'll see on the left. <coughs> Strictly people with disability are waiting in that factory. We are 100% local content. Whatever we buy that we use to manufacture those three products I spoke about, they are proud of Africans. I understand that there's a cry in the country that there are Chinese things that are imported and then local things are suffering. <coughs> so we strictly, strictly 100% content. We support South African content. What are the opportunities that are valuable for SNMPs? On a day-to-day -day basis, when you run such a company, you will need consumables. Your glue, varnish, screws, hand tools, stationery. You will have to go for maintenance, repairs, and some of the machines <coughs> to be used in the factory. So, as well is, we need sometimes suppliers. Not sometimes. We need suppliers of those things that I mentioned. <coughs> The best thing, the first of all, is to make sure that your central database is properly aligned. The second thing is, one of the speakers has spoken, to visit the factory and understand exactly, on a literal level, unlike in a presentation, well, what kind of product do you need? Where can I fit? So the most important thing is I gave you the address, is to visit. Most of the things, though, are not done at the factory level and are done by head office. So head office in Pretoria will look for suppliers that are here, but it will be easy that when they ask the factory manager who's here around as well, to say that, okay, I've got these suppliers who came to present their product. <coughs> that is one, two, three, four, and five. So I would encourage that to do that. We also advertise on the government gazette, like any government department, so watch out as well that particular thing. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I just want us to look at support employment enterprises in another vision. If we can get all SMMEs buying their school furniture, for example, in Bureta, we then come and make use of us. We've got stock, we can able to manufacture your things. Why? When you buy from us, you're creating employment for someone. As much as, as we're an entity, we have got target to say we need to have achieved this for the maintenance of the factory. So the Department of Labor does give us that fund, but we need to generate sales. And for us to generate sales is when we get people who buy from us. So instead of buying a chair, which is expensive somewhere else, far come and consult from us. We get it at the government rate, and our prices are regulated by the treasurer. So I request to say, let's support people with disability in the country. Let's support, it's a government entity. I understand because some of you are surprised to say this. When I go, wherever I go, they'll say, what? I will tell you, it has been, it has been there. Now the challenge, will, oh, oh, oh. they've taken us, they've taken away our powers of preferential procurement. Even us, we have to go and check after some of the project. That's how cruel sometimes the situation is at. But you can imagine those people, if you can see them, you will be transformed. When I got there, I was like anyone. You, became dis you can realize that okay, being disabled is not a nice thing. They need support. <laughs> so the more we can get more people buying from us, the more we're going to increase the employment. Imagine 4,3 and you can only employ 3,000. Mm. It's an insult. Where do you think they must go? So I want to tell you as SMEs, once you've got those tenders, once you've got something, buy from the support employment enterprises. Some of you have got patents. Of certain things, though we've got specialization, we don't just do any protective clothing. And then we've got to come and consult, see if we can give you a better price. So that we can be able to see 
how can we increase? Because the most important thing, which is in my heart, is to see those people with disabilities being employed. Imagine as a parent of God, someone who is a child who is disabled. And when he's born, working in a factory, he starts to have a normal life. They love, they, they love us, those people. They love. Because they like it. Once they get used of something, they don't resign. They don't go anywhere. They work there. But people who've got 23, 25 years of service, they're not like me who can apply and move to another level. So guys, let it be in our hearts. So wait, how many do we have, how many people do we have in effect now? Faith. How many people do we have? How many people do we have in effect? Fifty five. Fifty five. Disabled people only. Not, not and how many can you employ? I can employ hundred. Why don't you employ? <coughs> That's the challenge. So it's supposed to brew you, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, to say that as a country, you go to America, you don't buy furniture elsewhere. You buy within the such systems. Those who are in authority of power think of supporting employment enterprises for your office furniture, for your school furniture, for your hospital clothes. Think within a particular entity. Think in creating employment. Because it's, 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 it's yes, you can say 120 extra. Can be the fact is huge. But we've got people who buy anywhere. Very sad. All we need is. People. Suppliers, those who don't put their supplies, give us better because some of us all the suppliers they rip us as well because they are from the regional or whatever the scarcity of supply. Yes, I encourage them. when we come, check what can you be able to offer the entity. It's what I can be able to. <coughs> Currently, we've got stock for components, guys. There are <laughs> schools that you see. We can go and assemble those components. Someone you can buy as a charity to say, I want to just assemble the rural school. That let them, it pains me when they say a child doesn't have a chair, but we've got an entity there. So you can buy for a donation and say, What do these chairs? What components do you have? 75 grand a chair. How many of my bad boys in McDonald's? <laughs> but yet a black child sit in a certain chair. Let's question ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. At a particular level where we say we're gonna understand that there's support employment enterprises, primary responsible to employ with disability. If I buy something from them, I'm creating employment for them. Program director. Thank you. Sorry, so pardon my ignorance. Um, if you are government, if you are government uh, entity, why doesn't the government, uh, sorry, the Department of Education just get desks directly from you? Yeah. you know? Good day, people. My name is Victor from Ungeli Construction and Service. I would like to ask the gentleman over there that, uh, you know, suppliers, when you supply them with the products, they always have these requirements, like the quality management systems, like SABS or ISO standards. What kind of, money, of quality management system do you apply to those enterprises? Thank you. Yes, yeah. Where's the second hand? Uh, um, I've got statements, we're not actually questions, and one supports uh, the question there. Um, government, when they take up tenders, which is wrong, when they write, um, we need desk for Ebenezer Majimbo's high school, and they write in brackets, the company, 
example, if they want dishwash, they write sunlight or they write Newton. They're supposed to write um, development. Yes, they're supposed to write uh, 100 chairs for Ebenezer Majimbo's high school and they put in brackets. In brackets, they say we want from there. So now, you have, I think the government is failing you guys or you're failing yourselves. Second statement, it's the first time I hear about this organization. That means Busi, so it's also failing to advertise the place because the small businesses are growing and he's saying you've got affordable furniture. We're buying in expensive places, but we've got such an organization. That means food. Market. Disabilities, or do you take people and then train them so that they can be able to work at your factory? Hi, uh, my name is Greg. I run a small technology company that's based at the Science and Technology Park. Um, mine is just an inquiry because I think I had an interesting conversation yesterday along the same line. We don't have enough representation of people with disability within the IT space. Now it's how does your um, entity, does your entity train people um, with disabilities within the IT space? If so, then I'd like to. <coughs> Thanks. The last one there. Give me two seconds. There's the last one there. Um, good morning, Mr. Gorin. My name is Nobutula Satana. I'm an occupational therapist, so when you talk about people with disabilities, it's a really passion of mine. Um, what I'd like to ask, maybe it's a couple of questions we could engage in afterwards. Um, when you say there's only 12 in the country, it's, it's, it's too little. It's, it's very little because people with disabilities, they're not only born with disabilities. Some, some, someone can be physically or mentally impaired through an illness, through an accident in their adult life. So what do you do with those people whereby they only become disabled in their adult life? Um, what do you do with them? Because some of them, you, you realize that they could benefit from some skills training and benefit from um, your, your enterprise. And, um, Another question I wanted to ask is, how do you, how, how do the candidates uh, get to your institution? Is there a referral system? Do they get recruited by private companies to work, to work for, to, to come and work in your enterprise? How, how, how is the recruitment uh, process? Um, I think for now, uh, that would be all, Mr. Uh, thank you. I think when you respond, also respond to nothing about us, without us. Yes. And you talk about employment in this case. Is there anything that you do helping them set up their own entities? Thank you so much. I think I emphasize inherited. The entity was inherited from the back then government. So the establishment was for that back then government in terms of allocation of provinces, locations, <coughs> and the operations. So the back then government had what we call schemes where they agreed in the MOU, Memorandum of Agreement, with government departments to say strictly they are going to buy it from that entity. So meaning there was no need to advertise back then. So with the procurement, what do you call it? The BEE, the new changes, the new act of the day, BEE. From 1994 until 1999, we had the preferential procurement system, and it was taken away. Because when people go to the hotel to discuss their issues, they want that term. 
and they see the potential of enriching one another. I will be honest and frank. So the challenge becomes now, when we were taken away those preferential, that's why you start to be exposed to say, believe me, that's why I want to be showing the people that are heartless. You're taking away the preferential procurement, you want us to go and turn. Of which the tender now you have to stay, you're a government entity to say, no, 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 no. Okay, listen, we frustrated. I had one gentleman just not around now. He will tell you how we struggle to do the tender systems. So, the fact of the matter, to be honest, is that someone somewhere realized that you want to benefit and take away the preferential powers. And believe you me, it exposes the entity right now. When it comes to marketing and advertising, you're talking to the right person. I'm the one who's doing that one. <laughs> Why don't you do that? <laughs> Another excuse? Whatever leaky that we deserve with, you need to look at it. Should I blow it in a newspaper campaign, <laughs> in a radio campaign, or should I create employment? Because you need to be defined in two ways business driven and job creation for people with disability. So you don't have to run away from that. Which one? You give it two million. Because an advertising campaign, two million, you gone. So then what do you do? Can you employ people or can you just blow it a particular way? What's the arrow? So we look at this kind of trade shows. The Decorex, Bloom Show, <coughs> uh, any, deco any trade show, SMEs, we're there to advertise yourself because we know that people are going to buy from us. <coughs> Second, I ran a radio campaign in a newspaper campaign, though it was expensive, early March this year. So, thirdly, I go to community outreaches and exhibitions. Fourthly, I go to special schools themselves. So I try to amalgamate different kind of advertising methods to ensure that the entities well marketed to the relevant people. So to that we can able to get more employment. So in terms of CC to be precise with your employment processes, <coughs> remember, when you've got a bakery, you don't just like to bake the bread only. When you bake the bread, it must go out and be sold and be consumed, <laughs> right? Even us as an entity, we just want, we don't want to just keep them and they sit there in the fact we must have work. Mm. Hence, it will go back to the same thing. Someone, somewhere, realize that you want to benefit. People are helpless. I want to be honest. In politics, I don't want to touch. I might not get out there. <laughs> they are helpless to an extent that it's difficult for the entity itself to survive right now. You, you, you sometimes are ashamed of, 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 of such. So we would like to employ, as you can tell you, the factor of East London only can, ex can employ an extra 120. But how so? <coughs> if we make machines are seated there, if you can come, we would make machines, we would this, we would this, they just sit there. White elephants. So let's just be honest. We're not failing as government or, or government. Why government doesn't give us, the Department of Education must answer that one. Why they don't give us? We survive, let me be honest. The only province which is supporting us is Western Cape. They don't make mistakes but once. Because of skin, they buy within the factory, their hospital clothes, and whatever thing we sustain in all the nine provinces that we have in. Only the Western Cape. That they don't forget about people with disability. You can add one or two. My name is Faith Bogwana. I'm the factory manager for the Eastern Front. Uh, I'll be very brief. We are all in this room because we want to make a change within our province. <coughs> my, my passion is people with disabilities. And our passion as service products is to make sure that we create employment within the people with disabilities. We are not a pro profit-driven uh, organization. Our main concern is employment for people with disabilities. So if each one of us in this room can leave this room making sure that you put one percent of your time for a person that has a disability, you will make a difference. 
I'm not going to argue about the politics of who's getting the tender, who's not getting the tender. I think that is not relevant. What is relevant is to make sure that you make a difference as an individual. You make a difference and you change one person of other people with disabilities. That's all I can understand.